What's up Guardians? Profane here. Thanks for checking out the video. Today we're checking out a build that might forever change the way that you play Warlock in Destiny 2. It's never been a better time to be a strand Warlock than it is right now in Season of the Wish. Thanks to new weapons, a new exotic, and new artifact mods, you're about to see how dominating this new Swarmers build has become. Now, we checked this build out really early in the season, and it was absolutely amazing. But since then, we've seen the indebted kindness sidearm come out, an amazing and overly powerful sidearm that has a lot of potential with a lot of different builds. And when it comes with permeability, it'll transform from an arc energy weapon to a strand energy weapon, allowing the indebted kindness to trigger all the effects that other strand weapons would. And then the Wishkeeper Exotic Bow got a Catalyst option, providing hatchlings, and this turned out to be a much more beneficial Catalyst option than anyone could have imagined, because not only does every precision hit and every final blow charge up Wishkeeper's ensnaring trap, but so will the Threadlings that it creates, allowing you to execute those ensnaring traps much more often. Both of these additions have elevated this build's performance, making it exponentially more powerful. And in combination with the seasonal artifact, this build has become one of my absolute favorite and funnest builds to use. Now, I've already covered the benefits that the Necrotic Grips provide Strand Warlocks, but I gotta say, right now, I think the Swarmers definitely have an edge. This exotic causes Threadlings to be spawned when destroying Tangles and all of those little green devils that you produce will have the ability to unravel your enemies. Unraveled enemies will spawn tiny little threads of strand energy that will attack them and nearby enemies, causing additional damage over time. So in all reality, we're getting a very similar effect as we would with the Necrotic Grips poisoning, but we're getting an exotic that synergizes with strand subclasses much more directly. And because of how we have our subclass set up, along with our new artifact and weapon choices, we're going to have an abundance of Threadlings that are eager to bite the heads off of all of these damn aliens. When it comes to our subclass options, we're using the Weaver's Call and Mindspun Invocation aspects. Now, I really do understand the appeal of using the Weave Walk aspect. It's a proverbial oh shit panic button, but here's my problem with it. Your enemies will continue to stay aggroed to you while you're in this weave walk state. And while you might have increased resistance, you're not able to use your weapons. And when the weave walk goes away, your enemies are still there and you no longer have the damage resistance. Plus there's the fact that you're losing an entire fragment slot. So I'd honestly prefer to just seek the refuge of a healing rift whenever things get that dicey. And with that said, Weaver's Call is going to generate three Threadlings whenever we do cast that Rift. And any Threadlings that we have perched will get deployed in that process. And with Mindspun Invocation, we can do one of two things. We can generate even more Threadlings by consuming a Threadling Grenade. Or we could enhance our ability to control the battlefield even more by consuming Shackle Grenades. This will put us into a weave trance state that causes any final blow to suspend nearby targets. I really like this ability, especially when there's a lot of rank and file enemies, but because of our artifact and the use of the Wishkeeper, we're already going to have enemies suspended more often than not, and having bonus Threadlings will help us apply more damage. In terms of fragments, since we get four, we're using Thread of Generation so our grenade energy gets recharged faster as we deal out damage. Since we're creating a lot of Threadlings and keeping enemies unraveled, it'll be easy to keep this fragment propped. Since Threadlings are our focus, Thread of Evolution will work like a steroid, giving Threadlings a 33% increase in distance and damage. Thread of Warding will aid us in our ability to stay alive, as it will provide a 40% damage resistance bonus whenever we collect an orb, which we plan on creating a lot of those, so we should be able to maintain this bonus damage resistance as long as we're engaged in combat. And lastly, since we plan on suspending, unraveling, and severing every damn thing that we come in contact with, Thread of Continuity is going to be a tremendous benefit. It did get nerfed a couple of seasons ago as far as how much time it keeps targets suspended, 
but otherwise, this will be a fantastic choice with this build. But if you do decide to go with the weave walk aspect, this would be the fragment that I would sacrifice. When it comes to the seasonal artifact, there's a lot of solid options this season. Solo Operative is perfect for those trying to solo Law Sectors, Dungeons, and Grandmasters. From whence it came is great to use when going up against Scorn and Taken enemies. And with an Overload option, Blast Radius, along with Argent Ordnance, Rocket Launchers are definitely going to be a great option at DPS. Sadly though, there's not a lot of great Strand Rocket Launchers. With that said, the most important artifact mods to be using with this build will be the Unraveling Orbs mod, which will give all strained weapons the ability to cause enemies to become unraveled. There's also Dragon's Bite, which is going to cause enemies to become suspended whenever we break their shields with strained weapons. This is even effective against champions, and it will perform more efficiently when wearing seasonal armor. Wished in the Bean is a great mod to use on any build as it creates additional orbs off of ability kills whenever your super energy is almost recharged. But the best artifact mod that's really going to make an impact with this build will be Horde Shuttle. Whenever we damage unraveled targets, which is going to be all the time, those targets have a chance at creating Threadlings, which is in turn going to create extra unraveling and a lot of extra damage since literally every enemy is going to be unraveled. There's one strand ability that we haven't added into this build yet, not through our subclass and not through our artifact, and that's the ability to sever enemies, which reduces those targets damage output by 40%, which really comes in handy in in-game content. And that's where the addition of new strand weapons with the slice weapon trait will become extremely beneficial. The Marcato 45 is a heavy strand machine gun, that does offer this weapon trait, and it would be perfect to go along with the Wishkeeper, especially since it can also come with Hatchlings. There's other strained weapons that go into the Kinetic slot that also have the Slice weapon trait, but that would also mean taking off the Wishkeeper, and it's just way too good right now to do that. There's also a new strained grenade launcher that will come out later this season. While we don't have many details on how it will perform overall, it's naturally assumed that it will likely offer either Slice or Hatchlings, if not both, which is a very exciting prospect to go along with any Strand build. When it comes to our choice in Armor and Armor Mods, the character stats that we need to invest in will be Recovery and Discipline. This way we have Grenade and Rift Energy more often. Resilience will also be a necessity, especially when going into PvE content. In terms of armor mods, the main priority is to amplify our ability at creating Threadlings and to create as many orbs as we can so that we can maintain woven mail. So with that in mind, we're using all the standard orb generation mods like Siphon, Firepower, and Reaper. We're also using mods to improve our grenade regeneration. So we're using Bomber mods, Innervation, Absolution, and Grenade Kickstart. This will consume armor charges that we gain when collecting orbs, and it will convert that into grenade energy whenever we consume our grenade. With the standard three armor charges available, this would provide us with just over 30% bonus grenade energy, but we could increase that with the use of Charged Up or Stacks on Stacks. Since we are going to be creating a lot of orbs, we'll have plenty of woven mail, but we're going to add an extra level of survivability by using the Recuperation Boots mod. This will grant us 40 points of health back every time an orb is collected, keeping you alive while you and your little green henchmen rip everything to shreds. With the combination of the Swarmers, the Wishkeeper, Indebted Kindness, and this strained subclass, you're looking at one hellaciously overpowered strand build that's going to dominate at any level of content. So if you're in need of a great build to clear out ads or delete champions and bosses, then look no further than this strand warlock build featuring the swarmers. And with that said, I wish you all the best of luck out there this season. Thank you as always for checking out the video. If you want to make a quick copy of today's build, you can find a link down in the description below. 
But if you've already given this build a try this season, then let us know what your thoughts were about it down in the comments below. If you're a new Light Guardian just starting your journey, or a battle-hardened veteran just looking for a new home, then be sure to check out the Discord link that's also down in the description and join one of the greatest communities in all of Destiny. And until next time, Guardians, this has been Profane, wishing you all some happy hunting.